okay hi welcome to another procurement and finance coffee break mm. um today we're going to discuss an interesting um area how do you ha how does finance and procurement help a company become more agile okay. so um definitely as a part of uh, you know the pandemic but even mm. before that companies mm. were looking to become quicker mm -hmm. to respond to changing yeah. customer demands and changing technology trends yeah. and to do that organizations were wanting to embed mm. agile ways of working within mm. uh, within their organization but to do that finance and procurement which um, traditionally don't work normally on an agile way of working no. um, would need to <coughs> adapt uh, and respond to support uh, an agile mm. organization mm -hmm. so so for those that are not familiar um, how would you describe what an agile company is Richard I think I think the first part is to say why is it important <clears throat> and the thing for me is right we're in a global mega mess right everything is changing i mean the economy mm -hmm. availability of materials intense competition for just about anything including staff yeah. constantly changing consumer preferences changes in legislation technology i mean look at we talked about ai in mm -hmm. one of our early coffee breaks look at the transformation that's having on things so ultimately why do you want to be agile it's because you've got to be able to respond and if i was going to describe i suppose characterize what an agile business is quick decision making you know ability to form cross-functional teams that suit the task in hand not the traditional organizational structure they can respond quickly to customer requests mm -hmm. they're able to adapt to new equipment or new technology mm -hmm. really really quickly they can iterate and improve i mean it's very much like evolution it's mm those that can respond fastest to a changing environment are the ones that survive and stay ahead of the competition and you know that all sounds very sort of business harvard business school book like but i don't think it's actually that easy no because otherwise everybody would be doing it yeah which kind of then says right you know from your perspective sitting on the sort of the finance finance yeah. side of the face what what is it that you think you need to do to adopt that kind of evolutionary yeah. agile approach yeah so from a finance point of view um and in indeed in most mm. most traditional organizations mm. they're more slower moving and they're more hierarchical right. often with business decisions going yeah, yeah. through multiple layers yeah, before absolutely. a decision is approved mm -hmm. the other thing uh, that traditional businesses tend to do is they tend to focus on budgets and business cases for deciding when to spend right. money. And we talked about this being a big bone of contention yes. in the last webinar. Yes, yeah. Right. So the only problem with uh, that from a finance point of view is when a traditional finance function is focused on budgeting, mm -hmm. forecasting and reporting, um, they're all... Um, things that are done kind of retrospectively in a right. point in time yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and that whole process doesn't lend itself well yeah. to yeah. Um, monitoring the performance of an organization in real time no so so I from, mean, from I mean, come on let's be honest if i was going to talk to finance it's the annual cycle of yes. what we do in january yeah. february yeah and that's and that isn't sounding fleet of foot to me yeah yeah right so so here is where I wanted to talk about ING because mm. ING is fairly well known yep. uh, globally uh, for being a company that has transitioned to an agile way of working right. and um, uh, transformed all of its business functions yep. to support that. Mm -hmm. So if you actually Google it, there's actually a paper written by McKinsey on yeah. okay. ING as a case study. It's actually right. quite an interesting read. Okay. Um, yeah. And there are other papers as well, well yeah. but yeah. that's why I'm sort of yeah. flagging ING as an interesting case study mm. to look at. Now, here they highlight a few things that a business must do to become agile. Right. So the first thing they say is transformation is continuous state of mind basically. yeah right. so the ing coo says mm. transformation isn't just moving about a to b so you know i think our very first coffee morning we talked about you know 
when when the importance of having a vision and having vision. a, we did. a target right. operating model. Yeah, we did. So yeah. the ING says, mm. okay, well, it's not just about what is your as is, what mm. is your target operating model. It's thinking about, okay, you're moving from A to B, so mm -hmm. your as is to target operating model, but then you need to be thinking about C and D and E and right. continuously evolving and continuously updating that target operating model and not sort of sort of thinking are oh, sitting on your laurels and thinking oh well we've uh, we've achieved that now right but uh, you know, just to put a thing in all of us have been through company mm. transformations and sometimes it drives us mad you yeah. just finish one transformation then you start another yeah. it actually sounds like actually that is the mindset yes. that you need to have yeah is it, well we there's a balance i would say and um i think we we, we discussed in another mm. coffee morning perhaps we discuss it again but a balance between um, change to create value for an organisation and change fatigue because you yeah. don't want change oh, okay. fatigue yeah, to set point. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's a balance between <coughs> um, you know having change to yeah, yeah. create value mm -hmm. and um, not yeah. not having change fatigue across the organisation. Yeah. But um, basically, they're saying mm -hmm. in this this paper by McKinsey, yeah, the yeah. ING COO said that the organizational model that you have, the you know, the organogram yeah, yeah. that most companies have, should have no fixed structure and should constantly evolve. Right. And the organization should be made up of what they call in agile terms, uh, tribes, squads and chapters. But mm -hmm. basically they're phrases for different types of cross functional teams that exist. Right. So rather than like um, me sitting in finance and you sitting in procurement, mm -hmm. we might be tasked to, to together in a in a tribe to right. look at a particular project together and yeah, therefore yeah, yeah. be working in a, in a team of our own. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm ex-military. We would call this like a, a, a battle group. You mm. form it with the bits of units you need to do a task and then you disband it yes. when the task is complete. Yes, exactly. Right. Okay. So the other thing I would say from a finance point of view is What's, what's really different is that if you're going to support a business to become agile, mm -hmm. you need to be able to measure value and implement rolling forecasts. There's no point doing like a cash flow forecast now and then in another month's time do another one. Right. Because if you have all these these tribes or <laughs> battle yeah, groups yeah, yeah, as you call yeah, them, yeah, yeah. working in cross-functional teams, yeah, yeah. you need to be able to, in order to, if you're not going to go the traditional route and have um budgets and business cases mm -hmm. you need to be able to measure the value these teams are creating for the organization mm -hmm. in real time mm -hmm. because otherwise how do you make sure they are actually adding value and um, not invest significant amounts of uh, money in projects that are not right. giving you the return and investment you expected and then find out okay. at the end of the year actually you, no. you're nowhere where you expected right, but to you be. Know, you know what I'm going to say, right? So I love the idea of rolling forecasts, but mm. we've talked about data and technology yes. before and that sounds like a data and yes. tech. So, so I would say, in my opinion, it's going to be very difficult to adopt an agile be an agile company and support an agile company from a finance point of view and I would think from mm. a procurement point of view as well because there's a reliance on integrated systems and right. good data and I think they would be a prerequisite to be to right. to be able to support oh, it's uh, important for with, everything yes. I mean you, we can't do our jobs without it right? exactly okay so question for you Richard um, what makes uh, what uh, makes an agile company uh, hard from a procurement point of view. You've asked it of me from a finance point yeah, of view, yeah, and I'm saying, enough. well, okay, well, you know, really it's about, you know, getting the information, getting it in real time, be able to uh, find out whether these these squads of teams that are working in cross-functional teams are delivering value to right. the organization. Okay. So I'm going to come, just quickly refer back to two things we talked mm -hmm. about before. Um, we both know traditional organizations, mm -hmm. business case, the process by which you get a business case signed off takes months. Mm. And that isn't ever going to support Agile. You know, there's got yeah. to be an acceptance of risk. But like we were talking about in the, you know, the previous coffee break, you can only do that if there's trust and trust comes from collaboration and communication. Yeah. So that you know you're taking risk-based decisions because actually the three things that I would say are, are most critical 
is you've got to you've got to be willing to take a risk, do a small scale pilot experiment, a proof of concept. Yeah, yeah. I, I never remember which way round it is whether it's fail fast or fast fail. But the idea is be willing to learn whether something works or doesn't yeah, work. Yeah. Don't see failure as a bad thing. Seeing it as a learning see, step see, yeah. to then adapt. I mean, evolution does the same thing, right? Yeah. You know, so so experiment on a short quick basis learn from it and you know you learn from either side secondly and it is talked about in procurement all the time suppliers are an absolute gold mine of innovation not just innovation in their own right but of course they are suppliers to other companies as well and they've mm. got a great idea about what mm. works and what doesn't work and can help fuel the process and i think i think you know just as a cultural mindset you, you know you've talked about changing the attitude and culture of how a finance team works from the kind of very diarised yes. process. I don't think it's any different for a procurement team. We've got to come out to the mindset of we've got category managers and we've got a process for doing stuff. You know, we've actually got to prioritise and value speed, flexibility, adaptability, willingness to take agreed risks. Yeah as something that we need to bring into our team if we're going to be able to operate in that way. And I think that's, you know, as you said, it's a equally dependent on technology and data as finance are, because we basically share the same data and yeah. technology to be able to do that. And it's 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 and it's an investment. That, that would be my, my mm, take. Mm. Okay. So, so you've heard here today a little bit about what mm. Agile is, mm. uh, a little bit about ING. Mm -hmm. uh, we mentioned them and, mm. and some of the points the COO made yep. in their paper with McKinsey. Yep. Um, but I would say transforming your business from this um, traditional sort of scheduled approach mm. to doing things to an agile approach where you have cross-functional teams yeah um that's that's a massive change for an well, organization it is, yeah. it's also basically com completely changing ways of working mm -hmm. on its head really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so it's not without its challenges and actually spotify saab and hsb are all See, I have all companies that have struggled with transition, and mm. uh, again, if you Google it, you'll you'll find some yeah, case yep. studies on yep. it. So the issues they mainly um, face, which which mm. aren't uh, particular to um, mm. being an agile transformation, yep. were resistance to change, lack of clarity on direction, problems scaling it across the entire organization. So some of them, whilst they had success mm. in parts of their organization, being able mm. to do that across the organization, they found quite hard. Mm. And then the other part was uh, transparency and delegation of authority. So, you know, I said, like, you know, if you have a business case or want to buy something, yeah, yeah. it often goes through the delegation of yeah, authority, doesn't it? Which has all this very... Less than 25k. But you, K but you can imagine yeah. how that would be quite difficult to then transform that into these sort of, these, these squads and tribes. Yeah, how, it would uh, be, yeah. And, and, and yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. having a delegation of authority that, mm. that, that could apply to them. So, but maybe actually, just to pick up on that, maybe another time we might draw a parallel between business and military because mm -hmm. actually, giving clarity about what a combat team or a battle group has to do, what it can and can't do, what the limit of it actually is done on the fly in, mm. a, in a very serious context. So mm. maybe we'll talk about that in yeah, the future. Yeah, sounds interesting. Coffee break, yeah. So. Um, Really, these all come back to our first coffee break session, mm. really, because in our first coffee break session, we discussed, you know, the importance of having a target operating oh, model. Yep. So I if you're going that. to, if you are perhaps a technology company mm. or in one of those sectors where you do have to adapt very quickly yeah, to yeah. changing customers' demands and trends, yeah. online yeah. businesses. Fast fashion. Yeah, fast yeah. fashion. Then... I would suggest that not only do you have a target operator model, but you have uh, a defined process of how to quickly update your target operating model, as the ING COO said, okay. to ad update it for, uh, you know, concept C, B, D, you know, all the iterations and continuous improvement well, that you're going to do over the course of the business life cycle. Got it. Well, look, if you haven't read it, mm. go and have a look at the ING case study. Well, McKinsey, I think yes, you said it's one yes. of their papers. Yeah, so it's look, a good read. Yeah, it's interesting. Go and have a read. But uh, 
So what's on our next coffee break, Richard? My favourite, triple bottom line. And, you know, we touched on ESG and I said about, you know, the kind of things that were coming down the track that were going to mm. force a change in thinking and for us to work more closely together. But mm. actually, the triple bottom line will hold the thought for next time. But I actually think this is going to be a game changer and actually come to life mm -hmm. because of the things that we've talked about before. So until okay. then, which will be very shortly, <laughs> um, goodbye. See you Bye. next time. Bye-bye.